I invite you to remain standing as you are able for the reading of God's holy word that comes to us today from Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all of the preparations that had to be made, and she came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord said. You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. May God add blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of this portion of God's holy word. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. It is indeed a joy to be here today as we examine this very familiar scripture, but it is sometimes in the most familiar scriptures where I feel like God has the most to teach us, because sometimes we think we know what they're about, and God is always pushing us to listen to that Holy Spirit a little bit harder. So let us pray as we invite the Holy Spirit to speak to us this day. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts Be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Personality tests have become quite popular in recent years, whether it is the Myers-Briggs or the Enneagram or any number of other tests, whether you're discovering if you're a lion or a tiger or a bear, um, oh my, or whether you are discovering whether if you are a red or a blue or a yellow. Uh, there are so many of these personality tests out there, and I think that, that it, there's a wonderful opportunity when we seek to learn and to grow, to learn more about who we are so that we can better grow and discover the potential for being who we are created to be. Of course, the challenge with such personality tests is that sometimes it invites us to put people into boxes, ourselves included. And as we seek to put people into these boxes, we can sometimes limit, as we talked about last week, what we believe them to be capable of. And we can begin to limit what we ourselves believe ourselves to be capable of. I believe that Mary and Martha, for many Christians over the years, has been a story akin to personality tests. That we tend to look at this story and many persons have and ask, are you a Mary or are you a Martha? Are you a Mary that gets it, that listens at the feet of Jesus and is a good disciple? Or are are you a Martha who gets all distracted and doesn't really know what things are really about when it comes to discipleship? Are you good Mary or bad Martha? Now, of course, we laugh because we know that that's not exactly how this scripture is taken, but for many, it has been interpreted like that over the years. I spoke with a pastor friend of mine this week, and she said, man, you're brave to preach on Mary and Martha. She said, I will never preach on that sermon. And I said, really, why not? And she said, it makes me so angry. She's like, I mean, did they really think that if Martha wasn't making all of the preparations that Peter was going to be the one to cook the fish? Like, come on now. She has to feed Jesus and the disciples, and the men certainly aren't going to do it. And yet she gets chided for her actions. I cannot preach this scripture, my friend said. It was also a scripture that my grandmother, Kathleen, whom I am named after, has always hated. My grandmother was one of 11 children, and she grew up to have four children of her own, and she was always one that was making the preparations, fixing the dinners, pouring the drinks, making sure that everyone was clean and that everything was getting done that needed to be done so that their house could run smoothly. And my grandmother Kathleen hated this scripture passage because like my preacher friend and so many others, she felt like this was a personal attack on her life 
experience. But I think that if we look deeper into Jesus' words, if we take a little deeper look at this story, we can discover an invitation to all of us for something really, really amazing. Today's scripture lesson from Luke is one of two occasions where we encounter Mary and Martha. The other one comes in the Gospel of John, when Jesus rushes to their home after their brother Lazarus has died. And we'll talk a little bit more about that story later, but I say that to say this is not the only picture we have of these two sisters from Bethany. And it's important to look at the way that they are depicted in the whole of Scripture as we're trying to look at these nuggets of what God might be telling us in our scripture lesson for today. In our scripture lesson for today, we begin with Jesus and his disciples coming to a town to visit. Now we know from John's gospel that this town is Bethany. And as he comes, he and his disciples come and they are welcomed into the home of Martha, who begins making preparations who begins to prepare food and drink and lodging for these wonderful, renowned guests who have come into her home. And as she is making these preparations, as she is busy uh, cooking and, and taking the food out and pouring the drinks and making sure that everything is right, she looks and her sister is sitting and listening to the rabbi teach. And Martha goes to Jesus and says, tell my sister to help me. That's what she was supposed to be doing, right? She was a woman of the household as well. Tell her to help me. And Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted about so many things. But few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. And here's where we might hear that chiding from Jesus. Here's where we might hear a little bit of that, those words that my friend and my grandmother felt were a personal attack. But let's take a little bit deeper look at those passages, shall we? Martha... Martha, the Lord answered. Martha, Martha. Now, think for a moment. When you, when you read these words and when you imagine Jesus saying them, the way that he says them makes a lot of difference, doesn't it? Do we imagine Jesus waving his finger? Martha, Martha. Like a parent who calls you by your entire name. Kathleen Louise McMurray. You know that you are being chided. You are being disciplined in that moment. Is that what Jesus is doing there, waving his finger at Martha? Or is his word Martha, that recognition of a name? Like when the rabbi says in the garden, Mary. And she knows in an instant that her savior, her loved one, her friend is there. Is it a finger wagging or is it a word of compassion, a recognition of a relationship? Martha, Martha. The Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things. And again, as we hear these words we may hear that finger wagging, right? You're worried and upset. Stop being worried and upset. To which all of us respond, when anyone tells us to stop being worried and upset, how does that really go? (sighs) Is it the finger wagging? Or is the one who is saying these words, you are worried and you are upset about many things. The same Jesus that says, Come to me, all you who are weary and bearing heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. She is worried and upset about many things. You are worried and upset about many things, Jesus says, but one thing is needed. Or indeed, 
only one. One thing is needed, or indeed only one. The word there in the Greek, when Jesus is talking about this one thing that is needed, is a word that's often used to talk about something really small. Something small, seemingly insignificant, but precious. Only one thing is needed, Jesus says. One thing, one small little thing. You are getting worried about all of this stuff that you have to do. You are getting worried and stressed out about all of these preparations and about making sure that the table is set perfectly, making sure that everyone is happy and adhered to, making sure that you are being the best hostess that you can be. You are worried about so many things and torn in so many different directions, but only one thing is needed, one small little thing, me. I don't ask that you are perfect. I don't ask that you do everything. I simply ask that you listen to and love me. I imagine Jesus in this moment telling her, Martha, Martha, just listen to me. Stop worrying, stop stressing about all of the other things because you're mine, you're mine. When we hear Jesus saying these words, when we hear him say that Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her, we can be tempted to read that word better and immediately start those comparison conversations. Those Mary is good and Martha is bad spirals in our head. The spirals that make people like my friend and my grandmother feel personally attacked. (laughs) But that word better in the Greek is kind of actually a bad translation. That word better, the word that is in the Greek, translated here as better, actually has a deeper meaning, a meaning of something that is fulfilling, a meaning of a a good portion, something that brings joy. And this word in the Greek, diakona, is what Martha was doing, serving. And so what Jesus is saying is that this idea of service, this idea of being a diacona is is very important. It is very important. We have deacons in the church that are important ministers of the gospel and proclaimers of the word. We have deaconesses that are charged with being these important workers in the life of the church. And that is that word service, diacona, that is supposed to mean those precious things. But when we get so caught up in all of the stuff, when we start to think that service is perfection required, when we start to think that service means that we are pulled in a whole bunch of different directions, that we cease to remember the one thing and the one reason why we are serving, then we have a problem. And Martha, despite being pulled in a bunch of different directions, is a diaconia. She is one that serves. And she does get that one thing that Jesus is talking about. She understands that he is the Lord. She understands who he is. Because in John's gospel, when her brother dies in John chapter 11, it is her and not Mary, who says, I believe, Jesus, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come into the world. She makes a statement of faith. She understands. She does get the point. But in that one moment, 
she has gotten so overwhelmed that she forgot. And Jesus is inviting her out of that stress, out of that being pulled in a million different directions. He is inviting her to a better way, not because who she is is bad, but because what she is doing and the mindset that she has is stressing her out so very much. And Jesus is reminding her there's one thing, this thing, to know that he is the Christ and the Messiah. Our perspectives on this story change Jesus' words for us so deeply. This week I looked at some artwork of this scene. And it was amazing to see how the perspectives of different artists changed as well. This is a piece by Vermeer. And, and if you look here at Jesus talking to Martha behind him, it is as if he is pointing to Mary and saying, Look at what she's doing. Do what she's doing. She's doing the better way. Again, that comparison model between these two sisters that can be hurtful sometimes. And then we have pieces like those from Heinrich Simorazzi, <laughs> Christ with Mary and Martha, and you barely see Martha. She's way over in the corner as Jesus is having this intimate moment with Mary. Similarly, this piece from Jesus Maffa is the same way. They are, in, they are having this moment together, and Martha is off to the side. And then in this piece by Penny Mirandi, it's as if Martha is standing up next to this wall, and I see in her in this moment a real yearning to be a part of that that she's not a part of. Here in this one as well by Del Parson, Jesus isn't really talking to Martha, only to Mary. Which is why this piece by David Lindsay is one that spoke to me this week. Hand on the shoulder, an invitation to her. And even better, this piece. <laughs> A children's coloring page, which our kids have in their packets today. Kids, if you have those, would you hold them up for our, our grown-ups to see? Oh, yes, yes. I love this picture, and I thank our children for coloring them today and helping us. I love this picture because it is as if Jesus is sitting there recognizing that Martha needs to get off of her feet <laughs> to take a load off. It is the Jesus who says, my burden is light. Come to me, all you who are weary and bearing heavy loads. I will give you rest. Maybe this is the Jesus that tells Peter to cook the fish. Only one thing is needed. The invitation to Martha is the invitation to all of us. It is an invitation to a better way but not because serving is bad or not because us wanting to do right by our Lord is a bad thing or not because we are bad people who don't get it. But his invitation to a better way is a way of release, a way of freedom from the stresses and anxieties that pull us in the different directions and make us feel like we are never enough. Jesus is inviting us to a way that in a world of social media where we see the best of everyone and feel like we can never compare, Jesus says, let it go. One thing is needed, Jesus said, and that is me. That is me. Jesus is inviting us to a better way today to let go of that perfectionism, which I <laughs> have as one of my struggles in life, to let go of our comparative attitudes, to let go of our need to always be the best, 
to let go of everything that stresses us out and pulls us in different directions, to let go and to remember that we are loved not because of what we do, but because of whose we are. And that is that we belong to Jesus Christ. So let this invitation be our invitation today to seek to be loved, to seek to serve not out of stress or obligation or perfection, but to serve with the remembrance of the grace of God which passes all understanding, to serve knowing that the reason we do is because of the one who first loved us. Let us receive this invitation and let us experience the grace of God and the love of our Lord Jesus that abounds. Amen.